Hey indie game fans, if the days are starting to blend together for you, maybe this video will give you some interesting looking indie games to look forward to for April. So the top 10 best upcoming indie games of the month starts with Hellpoint, probably best described as Dark Souls meets Dead Space. Set on board a derelict space station filled with all sorts of eldritch monstrosities, challenge the cosmic gods in this dark and twisted world. The space station itself orbits a black hole, which triggers dynamic events like boss appearances and enemy behavior, so it certainly seems intriguing in design and is taking advantage of a lack of new Souls-like titles. The beautiful adventure game set in a voxel cyberpunk neon city, Cloudpunk caught the attention of many, myself included, when it was first revealed. Control, come in. This is... wait, is this channel receiving me? Uh, driver 14FC, this is Control. We read you. Is that you, Carmine? Start your new job working for the semi-legal delivery service with only two rules, don't miss a delivery and don't ask what's in the package. Of course, with the cyberpunk setting, this inherently comes with some tropes and expected story beats of a corporate conspiracy and rogue AI, so navigate your way through this world. I love the look of this, and the city of Nivalis seems like an interesting one to get immersed in. Making it here is like trying to paint on the surface of a river. The current of people and ideas and the crowds, they, they wash everything away. I'll make it. Sure you will, kid. Just try making it through tonight first. Okay, Control. On my way. Uh, one more thing, 14FC. Welcome to Cloudpunk. Physics-y, puzzle and sandbox games like Gang Beasts and Human Fall Flat are pretty popular with the streaming crowd due to the unpredictability of the physics leading to comedic situations, and the next game that looks to take advantage of that is Totally Reliable Delivery Service. Make your delivery at any cost, using an assortment of vehicles and machinery which is sure to lead to the usual shenanigans. This has multiplayer support as well and seems like it should be a good time. It's been 150 years since a cataclysmic nuclear disaster plunged our world into chaos. When we started our settlement, we had nothing. We had to set up a reliable water supply line first in order to survive. And with the help of our people, we were able to achieve this vital milestone in no time. Okay. Perhaps not the best game to be playing right now, but Endzone, A World Apart, is a post-apocalyptic city builder set 150 years after a nuclear disaster. But as always, life finds a way. Now that the foundations for a bright future have been laid, we set up a central hearth to strengthen communal spirit and build houses to cater to everyone's privacy. We even acquired the skills and resources to craft tools, cut and sew protective clothing, educate our kids, and gather herbs to keep ourselves healthy. Despite all that, laying out our cemetery 
was still inevitable. Rest in peace to all the dear departed. Sounds weird to say, but this game does look gorgeous, with its closest comparison being something like Frostpunk. But I do love city builders, so this was interesting to me. The solar collector combined with huge batteries is efficient enough to power our homes, even at night. And today, we are going to make history when a group of valiant people sets off on an expedition. There are hazardous events like radiation, toxic rain, and sandstorms, but this launches in early access, so who knows what they're going to add to the game over time. So we have to see if other hostile elements like raiders or even mutants will be a thing, but a very promising game for sure. With the 1.0 release of The Siege in February, players looking for a new physics and building puzzle sandbox should look into Main Assembly, where you build robots with freeform crafting tools. The programming aspect of this looks super neat, and the design capabilities look powerful, so you're not just limited to cubes. Excited to check it out, but more importantly, to see what other people come up with. Just a quick note, if you are new here and enjoyed the video so far, be sure to subscribe and check out the Discord channel while you are at it. Here's to more indie gaming coverage, so back to the video. Visual Noveler is an indie developer based in Taiwan, and their upcoming title, Eternal Radiance, looks pretty cool, combining visual novel storytelling with an action-adventure RPG. Play as a squire looking to become a knight by exploring the world and tracking down a thief with a mysterious stolen relic. Of course, this is very anime, but the 3D combat looks a lot better than many other indie games that I have seen trying to use this, so it does show promise and gets a nod from me. I don't know how you do it. Traveling alone, all the way out here. It's a good job you showed up when you did. Things were starting to get a little dicey up here on my own. I can't say I found myself to be the best of company. Then again, you're not exactly an award-winning conversationalist either. I'll cut you some slack though. You know, for not leaving me to die here. It was pretty hard in the beginning. I would just stare down at the planet for hours on end. You'd think I'd be sick of it, but even now. I couldn't stop thinking about the others either. I wonder if I'll ever see them again. Or at least begin to understand what happened. I just covered Filament in the video covering the Steam Game Festival Spring Edition, since this is a puzzle game set on board an abandoned research vessel where you must solve puzzles and uncover the mystery of what happened to the crew. However, as the trailer shows, there's only one style of puzzle, wrapping filaments around pillars. But for a game to have such a singular focus should mean that the puzzle designs will be very clever, think along the lines of The Witness. 
beautiful game as well, and one that I'm excited to dive into. What I'm trying to say is thank you. You're probably asking yourself, gee, I don't know anything about moving. I'm just a big dumb dumb. Well, it's as simple as... When Moving Out was first revealed, I immediately knew that it was for me, since this is a co-op title that has you playing as a furniture arrangement and relocation technician, as you pick up furniture and move it from point A to B. Of course, one can see the similarities to Overcooked in the art style, co-op, focus, and even the overworld map, but the new theme is interesting with more traversal and timing elements. It's wacky and fun, so grab a friend if you can and pick it up. Moving out is moving out this April. There's nothing more. I'm a sucker for pixel art action platformers, so of course, Biomass got my attention. Explore a sinking city and utilize beam sabers, guns, and scythes in what looks to be inspired by both Souls like and Metroidvania titles. Interesting colour scheme, not the most eye-catching, but it certainly creates a mood with challenging boss fights and a fascinating, lore-rich world to explore. The embargo for this information should be up by the time that this gets posted, so the news should be out that ITA is releasing in April. This boss rush bullet hell shooter has long been on my watch list due to the beautiful pixel art and insane attack patterns from the bosses. Add to that a ghostly cat that is your companion through all of this, and a game which combines the structure of Titan Souls crossed with the gameplay of Enter the Gungeon is a very appealing concept to me, taking the number one spot. If you enjoyed the video, why not share it with a friend? Check out even more great indie gaming videos, and in this current climate, stay safe, and I will see you after the jump.